In this artificial intelligence class, we will see the augmented grammars and the semantic interpretation from fourth unit natural language for communication. And in today's class, we will see the lexicalized PCFGs, that is probabilistic context free grammar, and formal definitions and augmented grammar rules, and case agreement and subject verb agreement. And in the next class, we will see the semantic interpretation and the complications. Lexicalized PCFGs, that is probabilistic context free grammar. Here, the probabilistic Fourier rule depend on the relationship between the words in the parse tree, but not uh, the adjacency words in the sentence. Okay, that is the probabilistic rule depend on the relationship between words in the parse tree, but not the adjacent words in the sentences. Here, the head of parse is was, uh, very important, that is most important word. For example, the first word, P of eat a banana, and P of eat a bandana. Here, banana and bandana are noun and eat is a verb. Okay, eat is a verb and nouns banana and bandana. Here, eat is the head word of verb phrase eat a banana. Okay, so eat a banana can be divided into two verb phrase and noun phrase. When come to verb phrase, eat is the head word, but when come to noun phrase, banana is the head word a yeah, banana banana is the head word and here we use vp of v okay verb press of v here this v is nothing but the head word v is head word small v is head word and the category vp is augmented with the head of verb v okay augmented grammar Augmented grammar uh, describes the relationship between verb and object, right? Uh, that is the probability P1 of V, N. Here, V is nothing but the head word of verb and N is nothing but the head word of noun. Okay, so it describes the relationship between the head word of verb and head word of noun. Let us take two sentences. P1 and P2. P1 is eat a banana and P2 is eat a bandana. That is, the P1 value will be very high when compared to P2. That means, eat a banana is more familiar when compared to eat a bandana. So, the probabilities will be learned from tree bank. The formal definition of augmented grammar rules. Normally, the augmented rules are very complicated one. The sentence will have the form of definite class. So, the result is called as definite class grammar or otherwise called as DCG. Okay, for example, the rule from lexicalized grammar of NP. NP means noun phrase. Okay, noun phrase with notation NP of N. N is nothing but the head word of noun. Okay, head word noun. NP of N which implies article A adjective j noun n with compatible j comma n okay here the predicate compatible of j comma n is to test whether the adjective j see this this one is adjective adjective j and noun n are compatible compatible okay that should be related to each other for example compatible of black dog here Dog is the noun, black is the adjective of this god, uh, of this dog, isn't it? Okay, that means here we are going to represent only this dog, not the color black. So, the noun is only the dog. Okay, so the adjective and noun should be related to each other. And the next notation constraints to denote the logical constraints on uh, some of the variables okay the rule only holds the constraint is true that means if the dog is uh, black color then the sentence will be true then only this particular sentence will be acceptable by the grammar otherwise the result will be false hence the sentence will be rejected convert the grammar rule into a definite class 
Okay, so this is the given grammar rule. This grammar rule should be converted into definite class. Okay, for this we have to follow four steps. The first one is reversing the order of LHS and RHS. That is left hand side to right hand side. So here in the grammar rule this is left hand side and this is right hand side, isn't it? These should be interchanged here. See, the noun phrase should become RHS and this is LHS. Okay, the first step and when come to second step, making the conjunction of all constituents and constraints. Okay, so here we have to include the conjunction that is and symbol, right? And when come to third step, adding variable S1 to the list of arguments of each constituent. Okay, so the variable S1 will be included here. S1, S2, S3. Okay, that is SI. And when come to fourth step, adding the terms of concatenation of words, that is appending, append S1, S2, S3, etc. to the list of arguments to the root of the tree, which is root of the tree, noun phrase, isn't it? So, in the noun phrase, we have to include append of S1, S2, S3. Okay. So, by following these four steps, we can convert the grammar rule into definite class. But to translate the grammar rule into definite class, that means parsing the logical inferences. Okay, parsing as logical inferences. Okay, see for this, there are many different ways are there. First, if we use bottom of parsing, we can use forward chaining inference rule. Or if we use top down parsing, for that we can use the backward chain inference rule. Okay. The case agreement and subject verb agreement. Um, for this, the pronoun I is subjective case and me is objective case. Okay, so these two are different. The grammar knows me is not valid noun phrase when it is subject of the sentence because we should not come as subject. For example, me smells a snatch which is not acceptable grammar sentence. Instead of me, I should come here, isn't it? I smells snatch is a correct, but me smells snatch is a wrong phrase. Hence, uh, we can split the noun phrase into two categories, subject noun phrase and object noun phrase. Okay, likewise, the pronoun should also be divided into two categories, subject pronoun and object pronoun. Subject pronoun I will come, object pronoun me will come, okay? The grammar for case agreement. Uh, here, this is the grammar rule. Grammar rules for the language E1. For the language E1. Here, E1 handles the subjective and objective cases in noun phrases. Okay. So, uh, the noun phrase rules will be duplicated for subjective as well as objective. Okay, when come to the pronouns, some of the words will get changed for subjective and objective. For example, I uh, subject will be changed to me as object. He will change to him. She will change to her, etc. Okay. Grammar for subject verb agreement. Because the English required, that is English language required, subject verb agreement for person and number of subjects and main verb of a sentence because this is important to overcome uh, the problem of over generation problem of language e1 e1 is the language which we have seen previously okay for example if i is the subject then i smell is grammatically correct but i smells is grammatically wrong okay if it comes as subject, then it smells, smells is correct, but it smell, smell is wrong, right? This is correct and this is wrong. Okay, so most verb have one form of third person singular subject, right? Uh, for example, when come to present tense, uh, three forms are there. I am, you are, and he is. Okay, to represent present tense, 
we can use three different ver verbs am or and is isn't it so one case split the noun phrase into two ways and another uh, split the noun phrase into three ways okay here the noun phrase into two ways i and it isn't it and the second one the noun phrase into three ways that is i you and he okay these three are the noun phrases okay so the argumentation are the better approach that they can represent number of forms as single root for a single rule the representation will be different so here an argumented grammar for the language e2 this is e2 this is a part of argumented grammar for language e2 with the three argumentations okay first one is the case agreement and second one is subject verb agreement and third one is head word okay here sbj that is subject object 1s means first person singular 1p means first person plural and 3p means third person plural and are constraints and the lower case names are variables so these are non terminals and this is terminal the language e2 has one noun phrase category but it has three arguments okay noun phrase of uh, c pn and head c is parameter for case and pn is parameter for person and number that is pn person and number and head is nothing but the parameter for head word of the phrase okay so let us consider a rule in detail s of head which implies np of subject uh, np h followed by vp of pn comma head okay see pn means the parameter for a person and number head is nothing but the parameter of head word and spj is subject okay in this given rule it is easy to understand right to left format okay here the person and number that is pn pn of n and that is noun phrase of pn and verb phrase of pn are identical okay these two are similar when come to head word the head word of s that is s of head and vp of head both are same because the head of np that is h this is nothing but a dummy variable here okay the head of np denoted by dummy variable h and it is not part of augmentation of the sentence yes okay when come to the lexical rules of e2 it uh, fill in the values of parameters and are also best to read left to sorry right to left okay for example the rule pronoun of subject one is i which implies i that means i is i is a pronoun and the subjective case is first person singular one s means first person singular and the head word is i okay so the automated learning mechanism which learns the algorithm automatically split the np category into np subject and np object so far we have seen the augmented grammars and semantic interpretation from fourth unit natural language for communication and in this class we have seen the lexicalized pcfgs uh, formal definition of augmented grammar rules and the case agreement and subject verb agreement and in the next class we will see semantic interpretation and the complications okay and for more information please go through your textbook thank you